Hello there YouTube. I've decided today just to go through Robert J. Lifton's 8 criteria for thought reform. This can be applied to any number of different cults, different beliefs, and assess how dangerous, how manipulating, how truly cultish they really are. The first one is basically control of information, communication within the environment and with individuals, resulting in a significant degree of isolation from society at large. This control of what the individual sees and perceives can take place in many different ways. It can be something as simple as simply suggesting that only people of this belief, this particular belief you're told to believe in, is the one way. Some of the cults out there use certain terms to describe people outside of the group. Abusers, haters, subversives demonic possessed or whatever to try and suggest that people outside the group are somehow inferior or should be hated or should be defended against because they are not in the one true way or they're dominated by dark forces it varies with every cult so there are slight differences slight variations some may try and claim that there are demonic forces at work, other people simply that if you don't have the right ideas you cannot be trusted. Or the external world is not enlightened enough to be there for you or work for you or it will damage your own spiritual progression. With this kind of idea going on, they can prevent you from developing fully into who you are or being who you are around other people. Instead, you're always at a distance because you're part of this special group. Whether you call yourself the chosen people or enlightened or whatever, you're restricting your reality, your environment, your existence as a human being. Allowing yourself to become simply controlled. The second criteria for mind reform is a form of mystical manipulation which is present in pretty much every cult to some degree. You try and manipulate experiences that appear to be spontaneous but in fact are planned, orchestrated by the group or its leaders in order to demonstrate divine authority or spiritual advancement or some special gift or talent that will then allow the leader to reinterpret events, scripture and the experiences as he or she wishes. Through this process you can be made to believe certain synchronicities are part of a greater plan. Oh, this happened to you in your past because you weren't on the right track. This happened to you now because you are on the right track. And through the correct interpretation, a very subjective interpretation, they can make you believe almost anything, anything of any kind. Whether we talk about certain groups saying, if you believe in this, then you will go to heaven. And if you believe in that, oh, you will go to hell. But of course, through this we can prove it because hasn't your life been better since you joined us? Haven't you been happy? And through the blind obedience and brainwashing, you believe that you're happy. Through the interpretation, the support, the love bombing within your group, they make you believe the things around you are part of a greater truth, the big picture, the mystical truth, the spiritual truth. But it's about control. A very common characteristic is a demand for purity. 
where the world is viewed as good, bad, black, white, pure and impure. And the members are constantly forced, told it's the important thing to do, it's the vital thing to do, to conform to the ideology of the group, to strive for perfection, for enlightenment, for progression, to become a perfect vessel or who you truly are in the eyes of the group or the cult. In this, they demand certain levels of, well, control. They promote the idea of you should feel guilt for this or guilt for that, shame. And they use other techniques to do this, including forcing away friends and family. People who might save you from a cult system may force those away because that is something which could break the control. If you had good friends around you and you're talking about some bizarre religious control system, people would realise and try and talk to you and say, well, can't you see? Can't you see? And you might even break away from the cult, but the cult or the religion or the organisation knows this. The techniques in place are there to ensure people sever those ties. Like saying something as simple as spiritual family. Oh, those are your family, but they don't understand you because you've found the truth. They're still deluded. And if you can't bring them over to us, to the truth, to the actual genuine spiritual truth, then you should sever all ties. You've got a spiritual family now. Your brothers and sisters of the church, of the temple, of the group. Our guru is like father or mother. That kind of mentality, <laughs> it ensures that you become more and more embedded in the cult, seeing them as your family and casting away all these supposedly impure elements, like people who might help you. The idea of confession, the idea of sin, sin for any reason. You had a negative thought, you've talked to the wrong people, you've got the wrong ideas, you need to confess. If you don't confess, you can't move on, you can't progress. The idea of confession is a good way of getting information on people. And if you should choose to leave, choose to leave the group, what should happen? Oh, that information can be used against you, of course. How best to centralise a cult than to have as much information on them as possible? As much control? You had a negative thought. You were feeling depressed earlier today. Well, you need to confess that. Not because it's a crime, of course, but it's made you feel like a crime. You've had doubts. You've had this. You've been told things by people you shouldn't be talking to. Sin, sin, sin. The attitudes and ideas of people. And they're told it's false. Not reason, not inquiring into different elements. Not simply an agent of doubt which you can use to try and think about the world around you and what you really want to do, but break you down. When you take away the idea of doubt and these attributes and attitudes you hold dear, or perhaps you just simply happen to have, you break those down. It's taken away your ability to escape from the organisation. And this information is, of course, going to be exploited by the leaders, by the inner group who realise if you should try and leave, they know a lot about you. Too much, which they can use to control your actions, whether to silence you and prevent you from destroying the cult or damaging its reputation, or they can destroy your reputation per se and make you suffer, either drawing you back into the cult or making you so unreputable as to be irrelevant in, in terms of actually criticising the cult organisation. They can say you're subversive, they can say you're infected 
or possessed by certain elements, beliefs, ideas. They can use that to their advantage. That's why confessions are so common in many of the cults and religions around the world. 